What's up everyone, this is Mars Man here and welcome to Mars Man Gaming. In this video, we break down episode four of the Halo TV series and boy, it's an interesting one to say the least. It gets me a little, little excited and we'll, well, we'll dive more into that a little bit, but uh, we're going to break down the episode in non-spoiler section first and then we'll jump to a spoiler discussion afterward. But I can't do this alone. I need the Mars Man crew to help me out on this stuff. So, like always, I'll introduce you all. To my left is Hotkey. What's up, guys? And to my right is Langella Kill. What's up, everybody? So, generally, the biggest thing, and we, we've done a few episodes of this uh, so far, and, and like I always do, I want to make sure it's clear. The first section of this is non-spoiler, so if you want to watch this to get a, a clear uh, an idea of what the episode is going to be like and what we think about it, you're more than welcome to. We're not going to spoil really much. Um, if anything, we'll give like some episode hints, but that'll be kind of generally like some things you'll notice. The second half will be a spoiler discussion where we'll really dive in deep. So if you want to hear about that, please make sure you stick around for the second half. Um, so episode four, it's very interesting to say the least. I was, I said last <clears throat> week that I really, this was like the fork in the road for this show. And uh, let me just say really quickly, I didn't jump off the cliff. Like I didn't jump to that part of saying I'm done. Like I, I said that last week, I was like, I'm at that point where you might make me just stop watching general, but you know, so far, I, I guess that I, I want to ruin anything, but not bad. Um, so let me like, like we always do. We here at Mars Band gaming, try to tend to bring out some positivity, right? As much as sometimes we see some really bad stuff, we see some, some ugly shows, see some ugly gaming aspects, try to bring out the positives. And I want to start off with get each of us giving our own positive that we saw from this episode. So me first, I'll say my first positive. I thought that each story plot was giving me something interesting to watch and interesting to kind of say, huh, I wonder what's going to happen next. I mean, even the Quan story arc, which I thought was like when I first saw this happen in the first, uh, in the second episode, third episode, I thought this is the most dumbest thing that they could ever do. But this episode made me kind of like intrigued to see what happened, uh, happens next. And I, I'm glad that they actually have somewhat story writing to make you feel intrigued. Not saying it's perfect by far, but I'm saying that it makes me wonder and say, all right, this is interesting. I wonder what they're going to do next. And it, it kind of makes me say, at least the writers aren't the worst writers I've ever seen. But they are at least getting in the right direction of some things that I actually... I'm wondering what's going to happen next on it and bringing you in as a viewer, whether you're a Halo fan or not. That's the big thing about these stories. Like these episodes are supposed to be like getting you to feel like I wonder what's going to happen next. I'm intrigued and let me keep watching. Right. That's the whole basic premise of being a writer for a show or a game is that person saying I'm making this interesting so that you want to keep playing or you want to keep watching. And I'll tell you, this episode kind of made me feel that way. Now, there's a lot there's a lot of stuff I have questions about. But one thing that's clear is that some of these story arcs had become more interesting than not. And I think that's one of my biggest positives I noticed first right out the gate. Um, but, Haki, I want you to go first here. What is one positive that you saw from this episode? Yeah, so I've always... Um... I've always said the music, and again, the, the music is is has been uh, at least one of the positives. Uh, but again, I, that's one of the positives that have been in every single episode. But I kind of want to piggyback off of you. I thought they had a lot going on. They had a lot of different stories that they were telling all at the same time. And I thought that these story arcs of kind of all the characters that they were going into um, were actually pretty good. So you know, not to not to steal you know what you were saying, but. That was definitely one of the positives that that I saw. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I agree with you, man. I feel like that made you interested. Like, like I actually want to see what happens next. Even with Kwan, like you're like, all right, yeah. sounds interesting, right? Let me let me see what happens next. Uh, Angelica, what's a positive that you saw? Yeah, I don't want to uh, <laughs> us to all have the same positive, but I actually uh, they did a much better job in this episode compared to the other two about pushing the story arc and making it just more interesting. Um, again, there's there's definitely flaws um, that we'll get into in the spoiler stuff, but at least you know this week um, it it made me like you guys said a little more intrigued on what is going on and multiple things. Um, but to to get a new positive, so now we're all, not all not saying the same thing. Kind of piggybacking off that narrative, I actually thought they did a really solid job of uh, pushing Halsey's character mm -hmm. um, and, and kind of showcasing her. Uh, character and mindset 
to the audience. Um, you can kind of tell, and I'm not going to spoil it, but she has a, she's not a hero. Um, and you can kind of feel that she could be a villain, but it's kind of like an anti-hero where she does, you know, she does stuff that was important to save humanity, um, to fight the covenant, but to get there, there was a lot of ugliness and you can kind of see some of that in this episode. Yeah. And you know what? I'll, I'll even add a little bit to that too. The fact that the side characters, I think, were being more introduced and developed a little bit more, which I liked. Like yeah. seeing, seeing that side characters were actually like had some importance to them was a good thing. Like Halsey, definitely for sure, uh, added that whole mystery of is she even a good guy at the, or a good character? Like on the good yeah. side here, Soren um, and, and Soren. I was gonna say Soren had a lot of airtime, which is always a good thing. Whenever and Silver Soren, Team, yeah, and, and yeah, and Silver good Team Silver Team episode. More, yeah. Yeah, like you know, if you're a fan of Silver Team and Soren, like we are getting, and yeah. like I said, you're the best three character groups I saw was Soren, Silver Team, and Halsey. And I said this for the past three videos, and you got the most out of those three care those three groups in this episode, which is why I like this one and how they developed the story because you built it off the best characters you have. Now, I think that there are some flaws, but the yeah. character development was pretty good for the side characters not for the not for the main character but <clears throat> in a certain extent but the, the side characters got a lot of stuff which is good because the part of halo that makes it most interesting was that it's not just a, as much as it achieves the dude we all know that but the universe is what it makes it so interesting was the people in the universe that have their own character arcs that's what makes the interesting part of it what halo is and they really did shine in that um now let's go to the negatives. And I'm wondering, because there's, there's some stuff here that we can go. Uh, but let's just say, firstly, Chief. Um, negative comes with Chief in a lot of different aspects. And I'm sure you all will kind of mention this in some way. My biggest gripe with Chief right now is, I'm sure we're all agree, but the, the helmetless Chief um, is annoying. Uh, I don't really like this aspect of it. And I'll say this, I said this for every episode so far, that it defeats the entire importance or the impact of always having your helmet off the entire time when you know you're constantly like you know the whole point of like whenever someone like chief that never takes his helmet off is always in is always in military mode like you don't constantly have to show your emotion all the time because then it defeats the purpose or the importance of it when you're constantly doing it all the time and that's just the basic writing component like you don't like you're trying to reveal that chief wearing his helmet or sorry taking off his helmet is a big deal right but you literally like you there's so many times you just, just like helmet off like constantly and you're just like it's annoying now it's like a broken record i've said that every week but the big thing it i keeps, look at yeah it, it keeps happening but the biggest thing i noticed with chief and that's why I, I just said chief in general is the story his arc is flying at light speed it's not even like you're letting things settle or you're letting things kind of simmer a little bit before you have these big moments you're just flying through it like there's actually and i'm not, in the spoiler section we'll talk about it but there's a lot of lore accurate stuff that happens in this episode which is why i tend to be on the more positive light here but a lot of the things that they're saying you could save that to be more juicier when you let character development happen right you're just jumping into these big things that you're just and like granted i, I like spark program stuff don't worry i was say i was slamming the table for that for years but my biggest gripe is that you're flying through story arcs and it's like you're not letting things like the pacing is so off, right? And that's what my biggest gripe was with Chief in general. Now, I want to get everyone else's input on this. Uh, Langella Kill, what's a negative that you have from this episode? Yeah, Chief is definitely one. Um, I just hate the emotion. Um, I, I just, again, it just, and I've said this in past episodes, it feels like Pablo Schreiber's playing a different character. He's mm -hmm. not playing Master Chief. And, and that just continues. Um, but another uh, disappointment to me, and I am going to spoil this a little bit, um, unfortunately for the viewers, you're not going to see any Covenant this time around. Um, and to me, that's a negative because I actually think Covenant is the best part of the show so far. Um, and you're not going to get them in this episode. So to me, that was a big negative. Taki, what, and trust me, Lizzie Kill, that we'll get more into that in the spoilers section. Um, but that is annoyance. I, I'm annoyed at the fact that the, the, we had a big scene. We had a lot of Covenant in the last episode, and this one we had literally zero. Which is like, huh? But yeah. Haki, an what's hour, the, like you get an hour show and, and you can't get any Covenant. Maybe in five minutes. Like in, yeah. in the first episode, we got like five minutes of Hamaki yeah. talking. 
Like you can give me that. And at least that's something that gives me like, cause remember there's three story arcs kind of happening at the same time in this part, right? Technically there should be four. If you're including the silver team now as one, another story arc, the fourth one, you didn't see a single thing about, which is kind of not a good thing. Like you, you kind of can include them, right? That's yeah. kind of important. Um, Haki, what's one negative that you have? Yeah, so again, not, not to steal anyone's and anyone's fire here, and I swear to God, we didn't rehearse this before. No. Uh, yeah, the, the biggest thing was no covenant, no Maki, none of that storyline. Um, I I thought they were going to show up, um, and we were again going to get some action from Chief. Uh, hopefully, I'm not spoiling that much, but you know, again, Chief did, didn't shoot a gun. He, I don't think he shot a gun, right? He didn't. No. Chief didn't shoot a gun again. Multiple episodes. Chief, imagine that. Chief not shooting a gun for two 60-minute right. episodes. Yeah. Two. And like, so we have, we have how many more episodes do we have left? Five more. Five. five. Okay, so, again, we got five more episodes. Right, like almost the halfway point. Next episode is the halfway part of the season. Okay. Yeah, I mean, that, that, that'd be my – that was probably my biggest negative. There were a cool – there were a couple cool, like, covenant things that we'll get into, um, you know, later in the podcast, but – yeah, man, just just no action really on Chief's side, um, and obviously yeah, the, the helmet off. It's uh, it seems like he's gonna have his helmet off at least eighty five percent of the time. Yeah, mm -hmm. at, at this point, it's it's like you know what you just it are. It's numbing. It's like you kind of feel like I'm so angry at this, but you know, yeah. just at this point, you just know he's not wearing. It. And honestly, you can you can honestly make a joke out of it. You should you should if you should make a drinking game and say every time Chief like takes his helmet off. Um, you should have a shot. And oh, you'll be, be you'll be hammered. You might be, you'll yeah, be hammered. You, yeah, you, like, like, and it, don't yeah, do it the like, opposite. If you take a drink you and you put his helmet on, yeah. you'll be sober all yeah. night. So yeah. that's, so, uh, that's the point. That's the point. Um, or you know what you should do? Have a drink every time Chief gets emotional. It not be, I think, a little more. You might, yeah, it might be. That might be even. more interesting. Yeah, it might be more even. But that's the whole point. It's just like, you know, come on. Um, all right, so let's get to our ratings. Uh, the. I want let's hockey. I want you to I want you to give your rating first on this one because I'm getting a little interesting vibe here. I'm getting some interesting vibes because if you didn't know, no one here knows. You know, hockey hockey is using the game ratings from the previous episodes, um, and because he's a generous, he's a generous he's rating. Generous, he's been generous, and I I honestly applaud him for being generous um, because being and jail kill have been brutal, and uh, so I want to get your your ideas, and I feel like I've heard some. Some feelings that you might might be changing your your outlook on this one, but let's let's see what you think. So, hockey, what do you think of your official rating for episode four? So yeah, I mean, my official rating it's better than the last two episodes, like no doubt. But I had high hopes that Chief was gonna be in action, and if Chief was in action, it was like on his home planet against the Covenant, and maybe we saw some really cool stuff. I thought it possibly could have been better than the first episode. First episode, I still have, I think it was like a 7-2. This one, I'm going to be giving like a 6-5, right? So higher than the last two episodes. I think it was better than the last two episodes. Um, thank God Chief wasn't naked again. Um, you know, we got the other, you know. He did get other, some ass. <laughs> no, he did, he got he some did get some cheeks out there. <laughs> we'll go in there and spoil it. <laughs> we'll spoil that later. But, um, <laughs> you know, like, it, it was, the episode was better than the last two. The, and the reason why is because, like you guys said, there was... A bunch of different storylines. I like the 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 um the Quan and the Soren storyline. I thought that was really cool. Um, he had some cool action scenes with that like revolver, like Deagle he was rocking. I thought that was uh, a pretty uh, cool scene as well. But uh, yeah, it could have been way better if Chief had action on his home planet. Like it would have been so much cooler. Mm -hmm. But sick. I got you. I got you. Right, that's respectable. Uh, Jello Kill, what's your rating and why? Yeah, I agree with Haki um, about the premise that this was a better episode than the last two. No question about it. Um, my ratings, again, a five for TV shows and movies is, is average to me. And I have this at 5.5. Um, so I think it's slightly above average. Um, not as good as the first one because I thought, again, what really hurts this show and what is continuing to hurt the show is the lack of action. And I thought the first episode action... Uh, scenes were better till to this point um, than what we saw even in this episode. But this had more action than the last two episodes almost combined, right? So um, again, that's where it's better than the other two, but still not hitting uh, great marks for me because we didn't have Covenant. 
Uh, we didn't have enough action. Um, and again, there's some scenes, and we'll go over in spoiler, where I actually thought they were really intriguing scenes that they kind of just cringe you for whatever reason. It's like they're doing it on purpose, where they just create a cringe-worthy moment in otherwise scenes that I actually enjoyed. Um, so that's kind of where I am. It's just, um, again, I don't want to keep punishing them for the same character flaws that we see from master chief um but they did do a better job with some of the side characters that we talked about and so that's why it's better than the last two but still not as good as the first one five and a half no listen i completely agree with both of you this is definitely better than the previous two episodes and like i mentioned at the very beginning of the show i was at that fork in a road man i was literally sitting there fuming by episode three and after episode two and three together two straight weeks of just straight uh traits um uh, you know, filler episodes. And I was literally right at that point of saying, you know what? It was I garbage. Done. It was just straight garbage. And I honestly, I was at that point of just jumping into the trash heap and just getting through the trash compactor myself. Um, but the whole point is this episode made, and I said this beginning made me not jump into, all, all off the cliff. You're just looking still, over the edge. It's, yeah. It's You're looking over the edge. Like, to... still yeah. Makes me like, yeah. Like, all right, I'm not jumping yet. I'm not jumping yet. Like, but like, please like, Let's let's make sure I don't jump, right? And I agree with you. I thought the fact that the storylines, and I mentioned this in my positive, the storylines have made me interested, made me intrigued. I, I already know I'm going to get some cheeks, whether it's Master Cheeks or someone else's cheeks. I know it's going to come at some point, but at least the story arcs made me interested to say, okay, let me watch and see what happens next. And because it kind of makes you wonder, all right, to for, for example, the Soren Quan story arc, in my opinion, this might be a bold take, is the most interesting story arc right now. Like, and I was sitting here like, Quan is one of the most disliked characters, like uh, by far, it's not just me, not just Marsman Gaming, and like, this is by everybody. Like, I looked at every YouTuber, content creator, Halo content creator, and they're sitting there like, I don't care about Quan. Like, and honestly, this made me kind of say like, I don't necessarily care about Quan, but I kind of care about the story. I kind of like interested because I'm like, all right, this is actually not bad. Like you actually introduced some pretty good characters. Soren's, Soren's a badass. Like, I mean, I like that. I like that he's a fact that like he has action and stuff like that. So I'm interested. And the side characters were developed. You have Halsey expanded upon, which I like. Silver Team expanded upon, which I like. Soren expanded on. Even Quan and the whole thing with her dad. That's we'll Venture. talk more about that. Adventure is expanded upon, even though we see some cheeks. But you know, Adventure. You know, we we get some expansion of the lore. And I think last thing I kind of just mentioned, said it. Though this episode had more lore components than any other so far, and that's what may, I think makes it different compared to everything else. And it makes me more intrigued and more like, okay they use some things that the lore had and i like that part so if i'm giving it my rating and damn i gave a lot of positive things there i'm gonna give it a six i think this is not to the same level that the first episode was on because of the fact that first episode had really almost half of that episode was conflict had a lot of action sequences had animations it had the covenant Right, and this episode had some action for had sure. Had the chief, it had yeah. Master Chief fighting with his helmet this, on. The chief had his helmet on for ninety-five percent of the show, right? For that episode, I mean, right? It had Chief similar, to the most similar I've seen him to what Master Chief is like. That's the point. Chief was the closest to lore accurate. Everything was lore. It was closely lore accurate, right? This episode had a lot of that lore components, which I like. I like to see in a show like this, like the Spartan program and stuff like that. So. I like that stuff, and that's why I'll give it a six. It's not the, as good as the first episode, but it's clearly better than the previous two. And I, I'm sure that some people are going to say, like, well, I don't think it's better than three. I can, I'm i sorry, but you're high. If you're telling me that you're you're on crack, if you're telling me this is not good as the last episode, right? And I'm kind of wondering what the next episode is going to be about, but boy, does it get me interested. I'm looking forward to seeing what Thursday has in store. Um, so that's my, that's my rating, number six. So... Yeah, guys, I mean, listen, we are po a little more positive this week compared to last week. And um, that's going to be concluding of our non-spoiler review. Next section is the spoiler discussion where we're going to talk about the three different sections of the episode and break down different things we liked, what we didn't like, and just get your general reaction. So if you want to see us freak out over some things, make sure you tune into the second half. But if you're not... Thank you for watching. Please make sure you drop a thumbs up and subscribe for more future content. This is Marsman Gaming. Now on to section two.
Well, guys, section two is here. We are talking about the spoilers of episode four, and we are nearly halfway there. And let me just tell you, I think the beginning of this was very interesting. I can't tell which one I like the most. I think I like the ending, the third section, the most, in my opinion. But the first section has some really good parts. I think the first part I'll talk about, though, is it kind of, the episode starts with this whole the Spartan program, Chief returning back to his home planet of Ared Aredidus. I probably butchered that name, too. And uh, basically going through some backstory of Chief. Um, and go, showing some things that he was like looking at some artifacts. He was seeing the visions and drawing them on pieces of paper. And a lot of this was, you know, kind of coinciding with Halsey and the, the assistant that's trying to constantly make out with her. And I, I think that these, this point, this part was interesting. Um, now, obviously, not wearing his helmet the entire time, um, but that it gave you some backstory of the planet, right? And I think that's the first thing I'll talk about. So, generally, my opinion. I liked seeing that the fact that they added in the Spartan program finally kind of talking about like, you know, Chief is like one well, of that rebel. He was kind of leaving the camp all the time. He was constantly never really like that person that would stay all the time there. And as he gets older, and that's kind of part of the lore. But he did do that. He was the most cunning, the luckiest, the best of all of them. And he was able to leave all the time. They couldn't stop him, right? Even as a kid. Right. And at the point is, is that he changes as a character. Right. But I like this part. I like the fact that they give some background. They develop a relationship between him and Halsey. Right. That's something that is really cool. And I like a lot about this first part. So I kind of want to get your opinion. So, Angelica, what do you think about this first little section of this relationship building between Halsey, Chief and just some of the background lore of the Spartan program? Yeah, I find it interesting. Um, and again, it gives you kind of the insight of, of how young they were when it started, um, you know, the kind of the motherly figure that Halsey had to become, um, especially to Master Chief. Um, so all of that was interesting. Again, I can't stand the helmet taking off. <clears throat> and it's almost, it, it almost just feels so forced that we have to see Pablo Schreiber give facial expressions and, you know, like we ha have to see what is, what is, you know, what he's thinking um, without... Yeah, all the time. All the and time. Just all the it time. It was so Just... bad that like like he parks the truck because he's the... driving. He had the helmet on during the yeah. truck. He stops and then he takes his helmet off to look at the house. It's just or like, like or like to breathe in the air. Like what? Yeah, the, like what like, if like what what like what if there's a sniper? Like, yeah, what if there's a sniper? Like, like what if there's an enemy force? What if there's a covenant there? Like why would you be taking your helmet off? It, it just feels so forced because we got to see Pablo Schreiber's face. And that's the part that just continues to just nudge you. But outside of that, the rest of the part was intriguing. But it's just like, those are the cringe moments that I'm talking about. There's more. But it's just like the cringe, unnecessary things that you could have shown. And I actually didn't mind when they zoomed in. And we'll talk about the part where Chief is seeing the visions. Where Chief has his helmet on. They zoom his in, helmet. It's, it's in his helmet. His and you can see his head. face. And what he's like, you know, like the different facial. I don't mind that. But why can't you do that more? That just doesn't make sense to me. So that's the part that bothers me. But the backstory was very intriguing. Mm -hmm. So, Haki, what did you think? Yeah, I thought the I thought the storytelling, uh, obviously, like we were saying, got much better in this episode. Um, also, the I'm gonna big ups to the the CGI here flying into the planet. I thought that yeah. little scene right there looked cool. The the um, you know asteroid ring around the planet, the planet yep. itself. The spaceship in space at least they're like spending money on some cgi you know? yeah something was getting spent right <laughs> yeah, right so i thought like the cgi looked cool even like the planet that they're on uh looked cool as well and then yeah that that dynamic storytelling where you see what happened during the spartan program when they were young and then kind of what happens we'll, we'll get into what happens later mm -hmm. when things kind of get a little sketchy between um halsey and chief but um again i thought this first part was was good mm -hmm. other than you know the, the helmet being off like langella kill said the part where and we'll get into it where you know you see him in his helmet they all they had to do was just do that more and yes yeah that's fine just you could do it that way you get his facial expressions coming off one time and then the rest all the time just yeah like that's fine you know but. Yeah, seriously, that, I don't think that's difficult of a camera angle to do. You know, what I mean, like you could easily do that. No, because they did it. Like you yeah. could do it all the time. It looked good, you know. Yeah, yeah. And can we just squash this once and we'll move on to the next part? 
I understand Spartans not being fully equipped all the time, like when they're in the barracks, when they're in the ship, right? Because like those are not normal things. But when they're out in the field, it makes no sense for the helmet to be off. I'm sorry, no, seriously. Yeah, unless like, you're just trying to show his facial expressions and force that upon the audience. Seriously, though, like, like, you're in a battlefield. Like how? I mean, and granted, like Eridus is not a battlefield per se, but, but they don't know. There's there was there was, there was a parasite. There was a parasite that killed everything. Like. So let's just take our helmet off and just chill. We, we vibing out here. Like, I mean, what, what are we doing? So I agree with you, but we, let's talk about the next part. Yep. Um, I want to talk about Madrigal. So the story, the Soren and Quan story arc has them going back to Madrigal, which is the first planet that they were on at the very beginning of the show. And basically this place has turned into now a, like a puppet state, I guess you would say for the UNSC to kind of like control it by having Venture, who is the leader now of this new rebel group. That's kind of like a, uh, you know, uh, you know, a police state basically where he controls everything and he basically has this relationship with the UNSC which allows him to get any money, any resources he wants and he can use that resources to basically control everything, right? And he's really, he's basically ruling it like a dictator and um, and I, I, what happens is Quan and Soren show up there first and I think one of the, before they even land on the Magical, one of the best parts of that entire scene was the fact that Quan was like, you know, like kind of bickering with Soren and, and saying like, uh, you know, I have all these like these memories of all these like things that I've been through and it's just I can't deal like all this stuff. And Soren's like, yeah, you know, like uh, Spartans, we, they eliminate our, our memories. And uh, when I left, I started to kind of take years to re remember everything. And he's like, uh, he's like, the first thing I remember was that my dad was dead and I, you know, I've grieved a lot. And then the next year I found out I, I remembered that I was the one that killed him. And she was just like, like what? And then he was like, you know, honestly, memories are important because they remember they make you who you are right even if you don't want to remember something you think it's bad like you know you hate having all this like all these things it makes you who you are as a person and it's important to keep those memories and whether you want to dwell in them or not it's up to you but keeping them intact is what's the mo most important um and and i thought that that was a very cool scene i like the fact that it's like soren soren is a great character like he's the yeah. best character clearly I, and i think that he does a great job Right at, the, at playing this, and and I think that he does. He's that that good. Uh, him and Quan have that very interesting relationship. I guess you would say she's just a teenager, just just spouting teenager things. Yeah. Soren has been the, the the seasoned veteran that's been through a lot. Um, and I kind of want to get your input on that before I jump to the next part. Which you know maybe I'll just jump into it first and just get overall feelings. Um, basically when they land on the planet, you know Quan is a is is wanted. Right, she's got a high bounty on her head and. Basically, Soren's like, you're going to keep that hood on and we're going to have to, you know, bob and weave through everybody to get through. So she does. And I thought one of the dumbest things is that every, like for someone who's a, a basically fugitive on the run, she makes it her purpose to go find people and make it known that she's back in that place. Like, it's like the most we And I said this on Jill Kill off screen. I'm like, this is one of the, like, the dumbest things, like common sense, dumb things. I don't really understand. I get it. Like she gets emotional, but like. The first thing she does is she goes and like finds the first person she sees and like, hey, I'm back. Where's the rebel force? It's ready to go fight everyone. Or then like goes to somewhere else like, hey, I'm back. What's the, where's the rebel force? We got to fight again, adventure. Like this is a police state. Everyone's afraid of dying if they even see be associated with the rebel force. And you're wanted for, to, you know, you're wanted. So you know, the first thing that Soren tells you. Don't make a, don't make a scene. Don't be obvious. And what did she do? Make a scene and be obvious. So it's kind of like one of those dumb like. I get it. She's a teenager. I just like, I'm like, <laughs> all right, this is kind of like, it's like, you're just like over the top with this little part. So I want to get your opinions. So, so what do you guys think about this? Was this Soren, you know, the return to magical as, as epic as you imagined? Was it, you know, was it solid? What do you guys think about this? So, so how can I let you go first? Yeah. So uh, like, you, like you said, right in the beginning, that dialogue in the ship uh, before they landed, I thought was very, very, um, it, it was, Probably, probably the best dialogue of of the uh, of the show, right? Uh, again, Soren, like you guys were saying, he's probably the best character, uh, no doubt, and he's allowed to have his helmet off, right? Because he, uh, he he's he's, ba off. he's basically messed up. His body's messed up from mutation. He physically can't put it on, right? Like like that's literally the reason yeah. why. Yeah, yeah, I'm cool. Well, with my helmet on, obviously, right? So, um, again, that dialogue super important, and this is where most of the action was right um you know the i don't know i think it was a i think it was a revolver uh, revolver that he was using yeah he was using a golden revolver yeah that was like that was a really cool weapon i thought that 
him he was shooting everyone and at least we saw a little bit of blood you know in the, in yeah. the, the first episode people were getting their heads blown off um so again the action in this scene was good like you were saying mars man um you know kwan just being out in the open asking almost everyone that she knew you know <laughs> where's the rebels Let, let's get back you know let's get back adventure it's it was a little uh, it was a little over the top and then the, again a little bit of cringe you know, well, we'll, we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll talk get... about some. Well, don't worry. We'll talk about some cringe stuff. Don't worry. Don't you worry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just talking about the just the entry to the planet and yeah. this real day. Yeah. So we'll talk. Don't worry. Don't worry, guys. We'll we'll get to that cringe. Um, yeah, the entry was good. You know, the dialogue, yeah, yeah. You know, the beginning action, I thought was uh, was top notch. I got you. So, uh, so Angelica, what did you think of this this first uh, first part? Yeah, I think the dialogue was actually the second best of the episode. Um, we'll talk about the, I think, in my my opinion, the best dialogue at the end. Um, but um, I like that conversation. Soren, I agree with you guys, is the best character right now. Um, when they got on there, they went kind of to a, a marketplace. Quan uh, found somebody new, right, took the hat off right away. Um, I get it in the beginning, but then she, like, chased after him with without her hood on. You know, it's like, that's the dumbness, but... Again, she's also a kid. So, like, I actually, it's not, I, I'm not going to actually hold that hard because they made it sound like they made her out to be like a naive kid, um, which that's what she showed. Um, so, I actually wasn't against that kind of stuff. Um, so, I actually thought the scene was pretty solid. Then they go to her father's funeral. I'm not sure if that's the second. Yeah, well, that, yeah that was actually the first yeah. part. Yeah. So, this, after, this after that first part, it was pretty solid. So, yeah. I actually thought it was, it made it, like I said, the most nervous thing. You started to see some intriguement and then it actually got better. Yeah. As the, as the show went along. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I, and like, let's just keep chugging along. The last thing I want to talk about for this first part was we got the first um, the first scene, first first cheek scene of the show, which was uh, one of the Spartans had removed the emotional chip uh, from, from their cheeks, and uh, they started to become more emotional. And we got the, the first sense of this, I guess, newfound emotion was with that same Spartan had put bullet oil to change the color of her hair that kind of be i guess this this defiant teenage you know you know uh you know hairdo i guess it would be against the unsc standard right um but the whole point i kind of wanted to get across this was that the spartans are going to become more emotional specifically you know i think it, i i could be making a bold take here i think the other silver team spartans might do the same thing i i could be wrong i just think my you know my hunch is that you already see one Spartan do it. I think they, and they're all like, they're all pals. They all group together. They all work together. I think they're all going to start recognizing that you could take out this, this thing and life is just better all around. Right. And you might be able to like, you could still function as a Spartan, but you have emotions that make you a human. And I think they'll all do that at some point. I just hope they aren't having some cringeworthy things. We'll talk about that in the second section because there were some cringe movies, uh, <laughs> some parts here. Um, but I, I just want to get and make that note there that I feel like that that's going to happen. I feel like that's some, these emotions are getting there. I'm not necessarily against that. I think that that's an interesting part because what's important is that this is lore accurate. Like these things, this happened. Like the Spart a lot of the Spartans that were part of Spartan twos did actually remove those emotional chips. Chief was the first one to do it, and that was like that's that's what I liked about the show because that was lore accurate. That did actually happen. Um, now didn't like make it all the time like where it's just cheeks everywhere but like yeah you know it that was a thing that occurred but i kind of i think we can move on to the next part just because that was just like a small little nugget because there's really more content with that emotion in the yeah. next section so i want to move on to section two section two starts with a pretty important scene of the funeral for kwan's dad and basically to set the stage here uh, basically, uh, you know, they're having this funeral. They got like maybe 50 people there. They're doing like these prayers and stuff for him. And, and Quan's Quan, looking for generals. Yeah, Quan's looking. Yeah, Quan's looking for the top tier re rebels that worked for her dad and trying to get them to be like, you know, like let's get this ready. And she's looking for people, and she sees one who was the next next in line, I guess you would say. And this woman basically says, "Rebellion, like we're done." Like basically. Venture annihilated all these generals in front of everyone, and you know we're lucky to be alive and lucky to even do these things. And Quan, you know, gets gets emotional, realizes that basically everything she came back for is not here, right? And she realizes pretty quickly that this top tier general either one sold out her dad or basically just turned over everything that she represented 
and became one of Ventura's puppets. And that set her off. And she she basically, you know, was, you know, out yelling at everyone, like, how could you all do this? And my oh, my downside is I said the same thing from section one. You're trying to stay incognito and you basically go like, hey, I'm back. And what the heck are you all doing here? Why aren't you fighting? And I'm kind of like, Quan, just like Soren saying it tens of times, just like stop making a scene, just like be incognito. And I get it. You're a teenager and you're just being emotional. I understand. But like, it's like, it's like, it's like you're watching Jaws and you see the people like not getting out of the water when you see a shark, someone gets eaten. You're like, yeah, I just like, I like the water. I want to keep eating. I want to like, I like swimming. Like there's a shark. There's a shark guys. Just stop. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's like one of the things like, why, why? And, but I want to get your opinions on this because this is a pretty big scene. All right. It's a funeral for her dad. So, so Angelica, what do you think about the scene? And you know, did you, did you have the same gripes as me or do you think I'm just overreacting a little bit on that? One? Um, I think it's a little, uh, I think a little too harsh. Um, again, she's caught up in the emotion knowing that, you know, the rebel army is gone pretty much. And no one has the will to fight. Um, and then that, you know, she kind of was just piecing together, like, wait, why are you alive if they wiped out the other generals? You know what I mean? So I'm actually not fully against it. What I found was a little, you know, kind of just stupid is once she started calling them all traitors, um, then Ventures guards just Ventures, came in. Sponsor, Ventures right? guards just show up yeah. instantly. So, like, like they were watching the whole time. And it was it just is. Like and then Soren, you know, does one move. And then, like, it's funny because they start wailing on these rebel people and and Quan and Soren just escape after Soren just beat up one guy. You know what I mean? Like there wasn't really a, a, a like there wasn't a conflict with them who they were looking for. Um, so that was kind of the only dumb part. But I think the other stuff I do understand it. Like it's just another you know Quan being a like a just doing stupid and, yeah. stuff. Yep. Um, but I think that's what they're going for right now is that she's kind of a naive kid that does dumb stuff. So I can't like that's kind of what they're trying uh, to yeah. show. Uh, I, can, I can agree with that. I can agree with that. Um, Haki, what did you think? Uh, yeah, so again, uh, to kind of piggyback off of what uh, Angelica said, uh, it, it definitely wasn't an important scene, but it was almost like Venture's crew was like, let's wait until she calls everyone a traitor and yeah. then we win. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was like, the only dumb. That was dumb. Hey, you know? Um, and again, like you said, like I thought when that was happening, I everyone knew that like you know, Ventures squad was probably going to blow up the spot, right? Yeah, I thought yeah, yeah. it was going to be some serious action. And, like, one person got burned, and, like, you know, then Soren and Quan just, like, dipped. Like, Soren, whatever, yeah. hit one dude or whatever. Then they just, like, escaped. So it was a little silly. Uh, but, yeah, like, Quan, like, screamed at the top of her lungs, you guys are all traitors. And I was like, oh, my God, that was very loud, Quan. Um, yeah, come on now, Quan. Yeah, what are you doing? All right, well... That makes sense, obviously. But yeah, yeah. no, I, yeah, yeah, I agree, dude. It was a little, like, and so they're just waiting, like, ah, all right, they, oh, she said, she, it, she, she said, it. all right, all right good. move it, move it, like, and uh, yeah. So, I, the next part I want to talk about is the going along with the silver team. All right, silver team now was tasked with Miranda Keys to now use them to kind of investigate this new artifact because now she's got the funding. She's got the funding, and now she can go investigate this without her mom there. She's off the ship. Don't worry. Now you go, you go test it, right? Um, she's doing that now, and I thought I liked the scene because basically what happens is they're they're all like sitting there, and they all have this banter where you know the Spartans are all like you know obviously they're, they're like they're where they're supposed to be. They're all you know stone faced or all doing what they're supposed to do, and they're all like they're doing what Miranda Key says, but they're also all like you know we know a lot about the Covenant that you know you guys just assume that we just don't know anything like we do a lot like for the unsc like we we investigate all these things we know we're interacting with the coven more than anyone else we know languages of them to a certain degree and we also help development of like technology that helps the military get better so like as much as you may think that we're just killing machines like we do a lot more than that um and i kind of like the fact the spartans kind of like did some slapping back per se because i felt like that, that kind of needed to be said like it was like you know, everyone, it was like to a certain degree, like even like the previous episodes, they had those committee meetings where they just kept talking about like, the Spartans are basically like, you know, they, they can't be, they have to be controlled. They're like, they're weapons. And, and like, well, you know, someone has to also say like, you know, these Spartans also did like a lot of stuff and they, even with them not being fully controlled, they were very efficient at being, of doing like these things. And 
like and maybe we can use them more than just like sending them out and just killing everything you can use them for resources because that's what they are like their resources as people too um and i kind of like that they are analyzing all the different covenant bodies and weapons and 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 they are all like you know uh it was like this crazy like miranda was like wait like you guys know things about the covenant and like yeah like we we fight them daily like all the time like we know their weapons we know we know how they work we know how they fight we know what they do we find artifacts all the time that's what we do um and that was second part i thought that was well there's, the there's artifact and there's, then a, there's a third part there's yeah. a third part component too but they kind of that's that that scene where they're touching the artifact yeah and like are we done here like they, they, but they talk about that but that yeah. there is a third part too to that you know, the downside of this episode is that it's all over the place with like talking about different storylines but i kind of wanted to get your opinion just about the fact that like the spartans and miranda keys did you kind of like this all like interaction where the spartans are kind of like clapping back a little like miranda you you don't you never once interacted with us a single time and you don't know nothing about us so don't assume that you're we're just like some you know machines like we're not like we're people like and i do you did you like that do you think it was a little rushed do you think it was you know what so hockey what i want to get your opinion first on this before we move on to the next part yeah so um like we were saying before like the Quan was one of the least favorite characters and i think miranda keys is one of the least favorite characters as well like the whole weird you know oh my mom's got the funding i don't blah 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 but i actually liked her dialogue throughout the entire episode um with the silver team i thought she yes. had a good job acting and like they actually like you know kudos to the writers man they actually wrote some good story arcs and yes. story lines this episode so Again, that's why it was better than the first two. But if they threw in a bunch of action and they had this, these, you know, these storylines going, it would have been so much better. But yeah, the whole aspect of her, you know, I think I don't know if she said it in the beginning or in the middle. Like, you know, I think she said something like, "My mom never let me around you." Yeah. Guys. Yep. So, so like well, that was a third part, I think. Everything. Okay. Yeah. So, but yeah, again, the story writing and everything, and her interaction with the Silver Team was another story arc that was like good you know so that, that's what i thought about that and we'll get a little bit into the details of, of later on in the story but I, I thought it was good yeah so let's like, okay what'd you think yeah i mean they come in first off they come in fully geared and they looked so good right so you barely Whoa. see spartans in this show fully Whoa. geared they came in fully geared and i loved how every one of them looked and then they were told we have to take off the mask to do this right but their dialogue like you said the Spartan, the Silver Team Spartan dialogue is what I had hoped all the Spartans would be like, right? They give one-liners, even when they took off their helmet. Like Now, the blonde the blonde Spartan is a little more emotional. She took out the chip, right? But she wasn't that emotional, right? She was still pretty stone cold, but the other two Spartans, they're stone cold. They give one-liners, and we'll talk about it in the third part when they had their helmets off. Like, you could see their stone cold faces. They still talk. They still discuss like different things. They're not just like robots, like, nope, sir. Yeah. Like they talk, but you can kind of see that stone cold killer, uh, like persona that they're supposed to give as Spartan twos. That's what they're supposed to be. And so I really like the way silver team and that dialogue, like hockey. Spartan, said, Spartan, 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 Bar- Spartan uh, Varric is like the best one. Like he's literally, he is. Like, it's, he like, really it's great. Is. I think we talked about this last episode. Like he's the closest we were getting to dress cheap. Yeah, as, as and I'm nervous show. about the blonde Spartan becoming like a more emotional person. We're gonna start seeing like Batman outburst. Um, I hope that's not the case. If she just stays the way she is right now, like I'm okay with it. I'm okay with that type of dialogue and emotion um, for Spartans, right? But like I really like that. Again, they were testing to see if any of them can activate the arc. Um, they could not. Um, so like that was a really. I really I agree with Aki. Miranda Keys was like either the first or second most disliked character this was actually good dialogue Man, for her. Made, made her made her better and i'm glad because miranda keys in the games is a good character so yeah thank thank goodness they didn't butcher her character to and now granted so not even halfway yet but this episode did a pretty good job at doing so um let's look at number three so this is the the last last part of this uh of the section was chief looking at his memories and this is before the final confrontation final part so this is basically the whole premise here is that you know chief halsey and the weird doctor's assistant are at the house the chief lived in 
and basically using Cortana, he can reset or re or look through the memory, not memories, but look at the house and what it looked like before it was destroyed, which is pretty interesting and pretty good job of using CGI. Wow, spending money here. That's a good, that's a good thing to see, guys. So they use it. They they basically chief and guess what, guys? Try again? Yeah, sorry, my series talking. Yeah, yeah, guess what, guys? Chief has to put on his helmet. This is crazy. Cortana's like, Chief, I know, I know you don't like it, but you got to put on your helmet. And I, that's, I can use I can show you what the house looked like. Fine. I guess I have to. And he just puts the helmet on the whole time. Right. And there he's looking through and seeing like the house and, and, and everything. And, and he's like, no, the table's here or whatever. But that triggers memories to come back. Right. He starts to seem like these are things I saw when I touched the artifact. And all of a sudden you're getting a wave of these new memories about the artifact and drawing papers about the artifact, him, you know, like seeing his dog and his parents, you know, like the dad's a scientist, all this stuff. And then and all of a sudden he starts to get memories about, you know, where is the artifact hidden that he you know, remembers where it is, um, which I thought was a cool part. And then the fact is they did something that was extraordinary. They found how to show his emotion while keeping his helmet on, which just shows a camera angle of his face. Right, and that's fine. That was literally great because you have his helmet on, he has the chief look, and it shows you that like we can also show emotion. And this entire time, it goes through the whole thing, and at the last part before his memories, you know, before that scene ends, is he sees that he meets with Doctor Halsey when he was a kid, right? And that is where that scene ends, and it kind of like, like shocks him, right? So I kind of want to get your input on what you guys thought about this scene because i thought it was a good one i thought it does exactly what it's intended to do it, it shows you that chief is emotional about his memories that he's starting to remember more things and it's also questions the relationship between halsey and chief which is something that is a background thing and guess what this is all lore this is all lore accurate chief does recognize and does remember a lot of his memories at a later point in time that is lore accurate. That's a, that's fine. This is where I like to see this stuff because it's 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 realistic. It's it goes along with what the games had created. So I kind of want to get your input here. So Angel Kill, I want what did you think of this scene? Um, did you like it? Did you not like it? What did you think? Yeah, I will say this, um, boy. When Cortana and I actually think, and we didn't get a lot of Cortana this episode, but Cortana to me is another. Um, side character I think is written well so far. I don't want to jinx her. Uh, they can make it worse, but I actually think um, Cortana kind of feels like Cortana, um, which is an important good thing. Um, but when Chief puts on his helmet, and by the way, he looks good when he is fully, like, they did such a good job of creating the Chief look when he's fully geared. So mm -hmm. it's so mind-numbing to me when they constantly want him to have his helmet Take off. Take it off, yep. Because he looks so good with it on. I kind of wish like he would go to the bathroom with it on, like he would do everything <laughs> with all his gear on. Um, because I love the look through the helmet. Dude, they, I yeah. love the look through the helmet and you see the you see the radar on the bottom. You see like the chief that when they were reconfiguring his house. That was such a cool looking scene. Um and like why can't we get more of that? Why can't we get more of that? And like you said, when they zoom in into his face to show like kind of like the anguish when he's going through his memories through the helmet. Um, that's what I want more of. That is the that to me is an important aspect. Um, then that I hope they continue. I doubt it, but I hope they continue it in this show. Um, and then obviously at the end where he kind of realized, wait, Halsey was in my house talking to me. Right. Like when the initial kind of thing was that she picked him up when he was an orphan. Mm -hmm. um, so like now there's just this dynamic where, wait, what is she lying about? And then she tried to make the thing where, hey, you know, your memories, you know, your memories could be playing games with you. Not all the memories are, are true. Um, so we're kind of seeing a weird dynamic where what's a lie, what's what's truth. Um, so that was it, it was interesting to me. Hate that chief didn't do action. Right. It was like a walk in the wilderness type of episode for him. But he's, that he's episode hiking. was intriguing. Yeah, hiking. it was a hiking um, episode. Um, so, Haki, what did you think about this uh, this uh, this little scene? Yeah, so I thought this was the, the best visualized scene, possibly of the entire series yet. I This was probably my favorite visualized scene. Um, kind of like Langella Kill hit it on the head. Seeing him in the actual helmet, 
super important that they pulled it off because now we know that it's he doable. Can it's hot. You can do <laughs> it. Yeah. You he never has to take helmet off. He can he can now do everything in his helmet. And if you need to show his emotion, then we can just look through his helmet, right? So, but I thought the entire you know reconstruction of his house through the helmet was cool. Um, him, I think Cortana said uh, you know Halsey looked at Cortana at one point and was like, "Are you are you doing something here?" Yeah. And Cortana was like, "No, like I'm completely disconnected." Um, and he was like just through whatever he was just seeing himself and uh, i thought one of the cool scenes was he, he you know the younger version of himself was drawing a picture and he's he was kneeling next to him and he was like can i see like yeah yeah, yeah. Can I see where you found that that's where you know they ended up going and, and taking a look at the, the real thing but i definitely think the scene was super important um it was visually again one of my favorite scenes of the entire series so far but um i think i i texted you guys in the group chat in the mars man gaming group chat that this is a tv drama right it's turning into a tv drama it's not an action drama there no. is yeah. chief action this mm -hmm. is not master chief is not a drama queen he is not if he's not shooting a gun there is a problem there mm -hmm. needs to be chief action that's yeah that's the biggest takeaway he, he's a soldier you know what i mean like we're like it's like we're doing days of our lives like we're like this is not that, that's not what we're going with here. Yeah, right? and like when you sprinkle this stuff in, it's good. That's fine. Like, that's the yeah, main that's... course. The main course has to be the fighting. Exactly. That's got to be the main he course. Master Chief, he needs to fight. I don't know if like if he's in battle without his helmet, if that's okay. I just need him to start shooting yeah. guns. Helmet on or helmet off, he better have a helmet on, obviously. But he needs to shoot. Yeah, guns. that's the big way of this. Yeah, listen, and, and, and you know what? I'll cap off this scene and I'll say that. I'm a little weary because, you know, the, the, they show the scene where Chief is flipping the coin and Halsey is seeing him. And I guess he said he saw him in the house. The first time, I, and I'm still like, I want to see the next episode when they go a little more detail in the whole meeting between Halsey and Chief because lore, lore wise, there is still, there's some changes that go along when the fact that, you know, she meets, she sees Chief. And, you know, they see that scene with the flipping the coin because that part happens in a, diff a different way. And it's interesting. And I said this to Lynn Joe Kill off, off the camera that in Halo Infinite, they literally have the voice line per line exactly the way it happens, I think, in the books. And and I thought it was so well done in Halo Infinite. And I was like, Do you, if you did that in actual live version of it, that would have been so cool to see because you never got to see that before in a live person. I hope that they like maybe this episode would give you a sneak peek of like that's like one of the things that they did because that's true more accurate the whole coin flipping thing that's the whole point he's lucky that's like that was cheap's thing his luck he's got all this luck behind him he's just got intuition that no one else has and he always gets to the coin right and everything um and but like you could have done it the, the way that the, the books had it which i thought would have just been better i like the scene anyway thought it was fantastic i just wish that you know we did that little thing just a little you have it yeah. you literally have the opportunity you just gotta like just capitalize on a little thing let's go to the last 20 minutes here so let we we talk about the second cheek scene with venture venture's got to do his game of thrones let me sit in my roman bath and i gotta be naked to do this while i'm smoking my cigar doing his best impersonation of chad you know he's got some you know he's got some things going he hot he basically orders in one of his top agents who used to be i guess i have a little we don't know yet but I think this this new agent called Franco is an assassin that was hired by Venture to go after Quan and even be wary of Soren, who obviously is a former Spartan. You know, like be be careful of this. Like, but I want you to to take him out. I'll pay you a boatload of money. And Franco apparently used to be a general under Quan's father. We have to I have to kind of we have to watch more episodes to get a full story of that. But Franco is giving me gives us some vibes. Uh, I think the, the character's name is Varric from Man the Mandalorian, which is the assassin that's with Boba Fett. Um, or Venic, I think is the name. Uh, I forgot her name, but I'm pretty sure it's one of the two. Gives off some vibes of that character a little bit because the scene happens where basically Franco is sent off. Quan meets, with, uh, meets up with her aunt and they find out that all the money that they had left over is gone. And that money now can't fund this rebellion anymore. And when that happened, all the generals just peaced out. And Soren is pissed off. He's trying to get his, his oh, the ship soldiers, out. not yeah. the generals. The generals got killed. The, yeah, sorry, the, no, I'm saying, yeah, the soldiers. Yeah. When there's no more money, they ain't fighting anymore. And 
Soren is off trying to get his ship or at least try to get out way off the planet because he's like, there's nothing worth here anymore. And he's basically trying to tell Quan, like, listen, as much as you don't want to admit it, it's over. There's nothing that we can do here for this. And just as that's happening. Yeah, but know, while I was watching, yeah. And, and yeah so before, you happening, continue, yeah. before you continue, what the ant said to Quan was also really, I thought, yeah, really with the intriguing. mystics, with the mystics, yeah. and which, which is actually a lore thing. Uh, the mystics, which is like there's this is a, these group of people that have like these like these visions that they can see, and apparently, according to what the ant said, Quan's father had went to see these mystics. They told him that he was destined to kind of lead a, a, this rebellion, and he was gonna you know it, you have to kind of like there's a higher purpose for what he was doing. So Quan's dad listened to that, and he says, "I'm gonna lead the rebellion." He does, and that's how this whole thing happens. And you know, and Quan said, they're like, I have to go see these mystics myself, right? I have to go talk to them. What, what's the reason why they said this thing? What's the reason why he did all these things? Yeah, they didn't yeah. give exactly what she said, right? They said that, you know, they told him the real reason why they're on this planet. Yeah, why, why they're here. Yeah, and why yeah, they're here and so she wants to see what that real reason well, well, was. Yeah, well, what that was. And, and I think that that was a really good scene. And I thought that when Franco shows up, starts capping people. And that's why yeah. she gives me that, that samurai kind of, feeling like she's got the police she's got the katana she's just slicing everyone up and then all of a sudden you got the you got soren shows up with his golden revolver and you're giving me the vibes of a metal gear solid two vibes between revolver ocelot and uh and, and uh what's his name um uh, yeah i don't even remember his name but i know who oh, you're talking about <laughs> oh, uh yeah. gray gray fox you getting gray fox and revolver ocelot kind of balling out the i don't think it's gray fox but i, I know what you're fox. saying i thought it was no not gray no, fox um, gray fox is metal gear one is the group yeah uh, what's yeah. Oh, damn it i forgot I know. His name. you're gonna remember at the end of the show where they're battling off the they got the cowboy you got the cowboy versus samurai vibes going here and i like the fact that soren had these good fight scenes um you know, it was it was a good scene for me. I felt like this yeah. made me so much more interested in the Quan arc than any other arc right now because I'm like, Soren's a badass. Like he's doing some cowboy stuff, and then Quan has to go see these mystics, and, and Soren needs Soren needs his money, and he needs to get off the planet. So they right now, you know, it's good writing. They're writing people yeah. make it more interesting, and I like that part. So I kind Metal of Gear Two is writing, right? Writing. Well, yeah. yeah, so right, but yeah, so Raiden was yeah. the, geez, I forgot. Yeah, Raiden. Um, but you had that that sense of, uh, you know, the samurai versus the versus cowboy vibes. And I like that because Soren, uh, Soren does kind of remind me of a Revolver Ocelot a little bit there with the way he was fighting and stuff. So I kind of like that. But I kind of want to get your opinion. So, Haki, what did you think of this this little venture cheeks and uh, the Franco, Franco assassins? Did you like this whole combat stuff that was going on? Yeah, yeah. So, um, again the writing in this uh in this episode was good yeah except for the the cheeks right so you can <laughs> the pool too much cheeks in my in my mind i'm like oh my god stay in the pool listener stay in the pool stay in the pool stay in the pool they see him butt ass naked in the pool and i just know he just gets out and i'm like oh man okay <laughs> and it's so like a close-up too like dude like yeah go to, i can't guy you don't have to do that like you just just keep it yeah. wide frame you don't have to yeah. zoom in like, <laughs> dude, like it's it's just too much like he walks he walks out of the pool goes up to the assassin and the assassin almost like what's that, <laughs> that is like gets him a robe you know <laughs> jesus christ dude um so yeah other than that part i thought the assassin i, I don't remember her name franco um, Frank. yeah, it, was, it was franco okay so uh, yeah, Franco I thought did like a, a cool job, you know. Um, she was using the the katana. She busts into the room, just absolutely slices the throat of uh, the ant. Yeah, the ant. Like whoa. Jeez. <laughs> like, yeah, and then she gave a badass line like, "I'm cleaning up your father's mess again." Yeah. So yeah. like they knew each other. That's a, that's we don't know what it part. is, but yeah. that was a cool line. Yeah. Um, and then Soren <laughs> coming in. Writing, yeah. So, um, yeah, she comes in with the katana. Slices the throat, um, then Storm busts through, throws a cap in her. She jumps out the window. She does like this, like this cool, uh, yeah, Assassin's like, Creed like thing yeah, going down. Yeah, well, <laughs> uh, a Prince of Persia. When, like, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, some super, some super, super Mario wall, wall jumps. Yeah, yeah. So like, I, I thought that dynamic was dope. And then, yeah, again, I'm not super into the lore like you guys are. Uh, I know you guys go deep into it. So the whole Mystic thing. I thought just even if it was lore or wasn't lore, I thought the whole mystic thing uh, was like a cool concept. But knowing that it is lore now, that's even cooler. So again, if they keep writing it correctly, 
Quan's story arc could get better, you know, but Soren's still obviously a badass. He's got that, that, you know, golden revolver. I hope he keeps that thing. Um, you know, hopefully he gets another ship and everything as well. But, um, yeah, I thought that scene was good other than him getting out of the pool. He could have just chilled in the pool, made his <laughs> in the pool and he, everything would have been cool. Dude, yeah. and no, I'll, 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 so what do you think about it? Cause I'll jump in. And yeah. I, I, can I just it. say, this is one of those moments I was talking about earlier, um, about, cringe moments that didn't need to happen because like venture i actually really liked the dialogue that venture had because he was talking to franco and he's like you know i pay you to solve problems for me and he was like i you know i've been through like a lot of stuff to get to where i am today and i said i need you to handle a problem um and then she's like you know the quan is just a girl and then he said you know little girls can grow up to be you know problems um and so he's just like i want yeah i want you to uh you know get rid of this thing before but you know it and you know rubbles the yeah. the, the it, it creates rebellion more problems. It creates more yeah problems. and so i really it was such a solid scene and then you know puts off the cigar in the in the you know thing but then again they just had to throw in this cringe of him getting out of the pool standing in front of her just butt naked like franco was like like all you could tell it was so awkward <laughs> and it was like, just unnecessary for a really good dialogue um, that was going on. Like, okay, you want to create a bad scene? God forbid you just do it like in his office, right? Where he's clothed and just says, "Hey, I got a, you know, something to, that we got to talk about." It's got to be in a bath. What? All right, whatever. But like, you know, like that was so cringy. But then that scene where the aunt is telling her big news that your, you know, your father, um, I think was like fed delusions or like we're we're gonna find out with these mystics what they told her father. Um, and while that's happening, and Franco slicing through her her men. When she busts in, slices the neck, says, you know, that badass scene where, you know, I'm fixing your dad's uh, mistakes or, or, you know, your cleaning them again. up. Yeah, clean yeah up the cleaning them up. And then Soren come in, badass, shoots her right in the wing. She jumps out of the window. I'm like, that was a really cool moment. And the only downfall to me is like, damn, we only get one of those uh, an episode. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, why don't we have more of this? Yeah. Um, that's the only downfall I see of it. I agree. Listen, like I think that this was one of the best. This is probably the best scene, if not second best scene uh, of the episode. And I, I like the fact that you had like multiple things happening at once, and you know, like someone's like, "Listen, you got to, we got to go. Like we, this, is, you know, they're all going to be here any second. We got to get out of here. We got to move forward." And like I said, it adds intrigue. It adds conflict. It adds, adds just good story writing at that point. And that's the point. I like this scene because it does all those things. I like to see, and it's just a general show and. I agree. It was this whole, it felt like this was like a forced, like trying to mimic uh, Game of Thrones type of thing where it's like they're, you know, like they're doing important story plot moments by having them naked, you know, and it's just like, like it's Game of Thrones would be is infamous for doing the Game same of thing. Game of Thrones people, light. Yeah, yeah, it's like Game of Thrones, like light, like you said, just because Game of Thrones would do the same thing, but people having sex while they're talking yeah. about really important details that you have to watch. But it's like, it's just an awkward, like, uh why like why do we have to watch this i work? didn't watch game of thrones because there was yeah way that that's too yeah many naked people like the ratio yeah, it, yeah it was, was way off too off but me. that game of thrones it was like essential you had to watch that scene and that's what made it like cringe like I, I have to watch this like i have to watch people naked and or having sex and it's like important and it's like this is like that same thing it's like they're trying to be a game of thrones when you didn't need like yeah not the yeah, sex yeah, but like they the have same, to be yeah, naked they were, like, when they're saying something that, like to make you like Oh, it's so it's so like yeah, you know, nudity, baby. Edgy. Let's it's so go. edgy, like yeah, naked talking to work. <laughs> and it was just like, it, you, like Franco did exactly what everyone was wanted to do: just grab the robe and just put it on him, like just yeah, just, just clothe up, dude. Like <laughs> you can tell, you can tell me this with, with clothes on. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like yeah, like but just put it away, bro. Like uh, and yeah. So let's let's move on to the next parts because this is where it gets more interesting to me. I think the next scene I want to talk about is Silver Team. And talking with Miranda, they're investigating, looking through all these different things about the, you know, the elites, the, the covenant. And I kind of mentioned this in the last section as well about like they were, you know, doing, they're saying, hey, like, you know, we are, you know, we're, we know about the covenant more than anybody right now because we, you know, fight them all the time. We know about certain parts of the language. And Miranda's like, wait, yeah, you guys like do know all this stuff. And maybe I could kind of pick your brains. And we mentioned before that they basically said, you know what, I'm never even allowed to be even near you guys. And I couldn't even get to talk to you once about anything because Halsey kept you kind of locked down. Um, and I think that the, what I thought to be really cool was this like, this like 
you know, the Spartans were being their character. They're being their stone faced. And I like that Miranda Keys is being written well in this part. And they find out that, you know, like some of the things that when they look at the videotape, what Chief had, you know, found in that first thing, they find, you know, translations from the elite saying, this is certain this words. Is sacred. This is a sacred ring, right? And all of a sudden, and this is where it gets a weird, the Spartan instantly goes, he found a halo. And you're like, well, how did you jump to that conclusion without ever knowing what a halo is to begin with? You know what I mean? Like, he found halo. Like, how do you how do you go from seeing Sacred Ring to jumping right to Halo? And I, and I like the little touch they added that once they said Halo, the original you heard sound, the opera, like the yeah. opera, like at the background, you're like, oh, yeah, yeah. oh. You're like, yeah, yeah, that yeah cool. Halo, that's cool. I like it. But I I was just kind of like, okay, like I get it. It's just like forcing, like oh, like it's like the family, like oh no, they said it, they said it. Like it's like <laughs> you know, like that scene. It's like. You know, like, you know, you can, you can yeah. kind of, you don't have to automatically just be like, oh, Halo, it's, it's the Halo, it's a super weapon. Like, they, they don't know that stuff yet. Like, it's, you know what I mean? Like, that's, that's the build up to it. But the, I'm just nitpicking. But the last scene, the little part of this that was a little weird to me or cringy was the, the last talk between um, Spartan and I keep forgetting her name, but Spartan and Miranda Keys, where, you know, Miranda, I think it was, um, it, I forgot who said it first. Someone has to keep this secret. It was like, you have to keep this conversation between us. And I think it was Miranda Keys was saying that to the Spartan. And and she was like, yeah, yeah, you don't, you don't have to worry about it. And about the like, ring. About that the they ring. found it was a ring. But they found yeah. it was a ring. And she's like, yeah, yeah, don't worry. I won't sell anybody. And then she's like, it's kind of like like we're sisters now. And I'm just like, and Miranda, Miranda kind of like was like me that second. Like, uh, yeah, that was weird. Yeah. That was it's weird. A little, yeah, I was like, that's a little glitchy. Like, that's a little bit of a weird thing. And I kind of felt the same way. Like, then no, like, stop. Like, let's not, let's not make this like a, like a teenager, like drama. Like, are we like best friends now? Like, no, like this, like you could, you had yeah. a great dialogue this entire time. And then you just like powder in some dumbness there. They're like, oh, I really like your hair. Like, like, just like, what, like, what do we like? No, just, just keep it, keep it where it's at. Like, don't need to jump to that weirdness. But one of the best parts I think of this that connects and it's kind of weird because my last two points kind of connect together um, is how, you know, Miranda basically says, okay, that was a weird glitch. And she's like, well, what do you mean? She's like, well, you know, for like, say, for example, Halsey, when she starts to see that people have like glitches that she gets really uncomfortable with that. And she will do everything in her power to limit those glitches or control them or even worse, get rid of them. And at the same time as that's going on, the confrontation between Chief and Halsey was got to heated moment where, you know, we said this before, like Chief said, he saw that Halsey saw him in his house. And how is that possible when the parents were alive? Like, I thought you picked me up when I was at the orphanage. And this is where I'm a little hazy because it's not the story arc of the Spartans is not that they're not, they, they, you know, she with, especially with hate with Chief, he wasn't picked up. Like when with his parents there, like all like over the shoulder or even in that same house or anything. Spartan kids were picked up when they were seven and they were replaced with clones that were defective and were gonna die anyway. So it made the parents think that like the kid just died of natural causes, but it didn't. Like and the the only UNSC just stole these kids, making their pair all their parents think that they died so that they never questioned it. And and then they, they would train them, right? So that whole part between Halsey and Chief, like saying like, you were there in my house and I, you like, you, like that part I'm a little like uneasy about because that's not really what happens. And I'm like, please don't like change up that whole dynamic with that. You can say that Chief and Halsey knew each other, like met each other before because Halsey did like meet with a lot of these candidates before they abducted them. And Chief, she met with the most, but like that don't change up everything. And I feel like I talked about a lot here and I understand that but I kind of want to get your feelings about what did you like about this last I think it was like the last 10 8 ish minutes like eight minutes of the show was a culmination of those two scenes where Miranda's talking with the Spartan and they're talking about like all that stuff you just said and the chief confronts Halsey and they're going to now move to another area to try to find more of the artifact and even try to go find where they can find locate the I per se the I guess you'd say the ring is what they're like looking for like what artifacts can we find that can go and cheap goes down the bottom 
and is like sees the the artifact, right? So I kind of want to get your opinions about this last like eight eight minutes here. So, uh, so Haki, what did you think about these this last portion, this last little eight minutes? Yeah. So um, again, Miranda Keys uh, and the, I forgot what number Spartan she is, but um, again, they were having good dialogue. Even the rest of the Silver Team was having good dialogue as well. And I believe that's also when they pulled out the needler. The needler. Yeah. yeah. The coolest parts because like we didn't see any covenant at all. At least we got all we saw one dead covenant on the operating table. <laughs> we saw the needler, and the needler looked awesome. You know, uh, in the video games, it looks like a needler is like just little hands. It's not as massive. That thing looked like a freaking, <laughs> like, I think it was like a bazooka. I'm like, <laughs> dude, like this is not. Now, granted, it's a big gun because the aliens use it, but like it's not like this massive. Yeah, that like, thing was big. Check out this. Check out this needler I got. Yeah, yeah, like, but like the uh, the the Spartan girl, she goes in and explains like yeah, how their, like works and like she was like, oh, this is my favorite weapon and everything, which I thought that dialogue was cool as well. Yeah, and they were talking about like you, you can know, do have super you ever seen a grunt? Have you yeah. ever seen a grunt beg for its life? Like that was so like dope. The, that was a dope. Thing. The writing, the yeah. writing. This episode, the this had all right. So the first episode had the best action. This episode had the best writing, no mm-hmm. doubt. I think mm-hmm. this episode had the best writing and the visuals as well but yeah that scene you know and they even like they explain like the animal thing like yeah oh, that was oh and I, I, I forgot to mention that too that yeah. was probably one of the coolest little things but just how spartans are built like they're just built different you know what yeah. i mean where and I'll, maybe yeah, I'll just, and the unnc is yeah. screwed up yeah I'll, I'll just quickly elaborate just so everyone here just to kind of remembers the part where basically like talking about how they're trained as kids like yeah each of us is given our own little pet they're like oh yeah the training was fun like they're like how? And like, well, we each got our own pet. Like, oh, that's that's cool. Like, yeah, I got a dog. You know, uh, you know, I forgot the name. Like, she got she a got cat. cat. Vera got a pig. And basically, the whole thing is that you're basically hunting after your target. And if you get caught, you know, you you lose something. And or like, any mission, if you, you fail you a lose, mission, they mission. wipe out your pet. Yeah, they kill your pet. Like, or you have to kill. Basically, you have to annihilate your own pet. Basically, and Even and they're like, it, yeah, they, well, no, yeah. Even if you win, they kill. They take. Oh, well, if they win, they kill it. No, yeah, yeah. He kills it. yeah. So like, yeah. He, it, if you lose, you kill your pet, and then at the end, when a guy, when Derek never lost, yeah, they ended up killing it anyway. Yeah, it was just like, like you're like, whoa, that's brutal. Like that's that's messed up. But that's the point. It's showing. That's why I like the Spartan program part because it's like that's lore accurate. These are all things that like why are these people are built different. They're built like machines because it's like they take away your emotion. They make you hunt like like your machines. And like I liked that part. That's like why I what I wanted for the show to go into the deep lore of the Spartan program. Like that is so such an interesting thing that people don't really know. So uh, yeah, so uh, that part and like Hockey said. So is there any more you want to add, Hockey? Before I go give it to yeah, so, um, uh So obviously the Miranda Keys and that whole dialogue was awesome. And then you know Master Chief, kind of like you were saying, Marsman. Um, at the end of his visions, you know, seeing Halsey in his house, like, in my mind, it's like, all right, what happened to his parents? Did they die by the virus? Did Halsey just, like, kill him? Like, what the hell is going on here, you know? Um, so I thought, again, the visuals were awesome, and you can kind of see the, the, um, uh, the trust breaking, uh, with Master Chief and Halsey. Like, he is, like, giving her, like, weird looks and, like, like uh, really uneasy looks the whole time, and even when she says like, you know, I was I was there for you then, and I'm still here for you now, and he just like walks away and doesn't say anything, and she like takes a deep breath. Like you can see like there's like unsettling uh, like trust issues going Dude, on. You could you could have given him his helmet, and he could have done all that. Like, you know what I mean? Like just rock his helmet, just wear his helmet, and he just all he needs to do is just look at her, just like look at her and just say that, and then he just looks forward and just walks away. Yeah. That would have and easily you would done the feel, same, and you thing. feel the same thing. Yeah, and honestly, you probably would have even done better because you would see not like what is he, what is his face like? You know, what I mean, like you're just he's just like if you have his helmet on, he looks stone faced all the time. So like you don't need to even have him do a stone faced look because the helmet does it automatically for him. That's kind of the point. Like you know, what I mean, like well, Angelica, what what's how do you feel about this like last eight minutes? Outside the cringy sister and the oil hair stuff. This was really great. I actually thought this was some of the better non-action writing um, because the dialogue with Silver Team was really good and you kind of get into the mindset of the Spartans 
and how, you know, they're just, they're talking about the weaponry. They're talking about, you know, when these get shot into you, they blow your body parts off and like disintegrate your body. Like the needlers do. Um, so like, that was such a cool part talking about like, have you ever seen a grunt beg for its life? You know, like, you know, they're just talking about like warfare that Miranda keys doesn't know anything about. Yeah. And Varys is like, Oh, pathetic. And then they're all just like, yeah. yeah like, and they're yeah. bringing, and they were bringing up words. And then she was like, this was finally like Miranda Keys showing the intelligence of her, you know, what she was supposed to be instead of a brat. She puts together like, wait a minute, like, can you say those words? And that's how they penciled in the ring stuff. So like, it was finally like the getting out of the brattiness and into like an actual intelligence stuff. Um, so like that was important. And then obviously outside the cringy sister part, which he started showing emotion, you know, having a conversation with her. She was like, you know, that's you're unusual because this is not how Spartans are supposed to be. And Halsey, you know, she likes people not human, right? So like when she says that, it goes into the dialogue of Halsey while the scene of them driving to the uh, artifact part. And it ends with she touching the art, you know, touching it. And she says, that's when she brings up the glitches. And usually when she sees glitches, she just tries to fix them or get rid of them. And she's looking at Chief. And when Chief turns back to the artifact, you can see like this, she had a smile on and then it faded away. You know what I mean? So like, that was such a like really well done part, really good dialogue with the Miranda Keys, you know, dialoguing Halsey and it's setting up Halsey's character, mm -hmm. which like, that's like, that was like Haki said, that's the best writing. They need more of that writing with more action. And now we're talking about legitimate episodes. Yeah. No, I completely agree. And, and, and that's like the big thing I noticed. I thought like, the whole last eight minutes was the banter between Spartans and Miranda Keys and the whole like, and as much as people like the, they rag on like I the whole cliche, I guess you say cliche of like a dialogue. And then they have like cut scenes of your sh people, people doing certain things. Like, I'm not against that. I, as long as it's done right, then I'm perfectly fine. With it. And yeah. honestly, it was like, cause like they, she starts out with saying like, you know, Halsey doesn't like, it doesn't like the way humans, like when people are being more like humans. Cause they can't be controlled. And because they can't be controlled. They act out with emotion. And it shows like the Soren and Quan, they act with emotion. They act recklessly. Cause that's what Quan was doing. Then they go to like, they like, 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 like Jell Kill said, like human actions are like glitches and then like she there's only two things that she either fix the glitches or gets rid of them and i really like that scene i really like the way they ended it and now it makes you like excited to see what happens next and that's the part that i think we're missing a lot of these episodes was good story writing like i want to see more of that and i agree with you guys so yeah i mean that's going to be it for our spoiler more discussion. covenant more give us some more covenant give more us more covenant more, give it and give more us covenant characters more covenant characters give us some more chief with his helmet on please give us some good story writing continue with that please because i and, really yeah i enjoy that man and chief shooting guns yeah please i mean i really <laughs> would like to see that and it's been episodes we haven't seen it. <laughs> yeah guys yeah so i mean listen i i think we did a lot of deep diving here and a lot of discussion so please if you haven't done so yet drop a thumbs up and subscribe for more future content and join us on our next episode review our breakdown next week on thursday but we will be having a lot more content up until that point so please make sure you tune in again uh thank you for watching and until next time this is mars man gaming signing off peace <laughs>